Here's the reason why they're not playing well. It has nothing to do with Joel Embiid. You brought in an old man in Paul George. Paul George, everybody thought was a great acquisition. They were talking about that being the second best acquisition in the offseason for any of the teams that made acquisitions. Look, what the Knicks did, obviously bringing in Towns and, and, and Mikhail Bridges. But everybody said this Paul George move is going to be great. Him and Joel Embiid working together, it's not. Where, I repeat, where have we seen Paul George gone to? Everywhere he's gone. He came from Indiana. He went to the L.A. Clippers. Were the L.A. Clippers ever good when Paul George was there? Honestly. I mean, Kawhi Leonard, Paul George, they were under contract. Everybody thought that was going to be an ultimate team in the Western Conference. How far did they get? When they had Kawhi Leonard and Paul George, did they ever go to a Western Conference Finals? No. And Paul George, no matter what they brought, they brought James Harden there. They brought Russell Westbrook there. It never worked. It never worked. The Clippers could never get over the hump. Even when Chris Paul was there and Lob City was there and Doc Rivers was there, they could never. Everywhere Paul George has gone, he could never stay 100% healthy. I think Paul George has averaged in the last five years 58 games. 58 games a season. And the guy never plays a full season. So then you look at Joel Embiid, and he's come out and said before the season started, he is not playing back-to-back -back games. This is a guy that's taking a quarter of his team's salary. This guy's making $51 or $52 million. And now, and over the last, I would say now and over the last couple of weeks, some of the things he said about the team and the organization, he's practically trying to run himself out there. And, and we've seen this, the Greek freak. I'll say this about uh, Giannis. Giannis is not throwing his team under the bus. He said some things defensively about the team and what this team should be doing defensively. He's never thrown any player under the bus, any player under the bus. And he takes responsibility for this team not playing at a high level. Have you ever heard Joel Embiid take any responsibility when this team falls out of place? Never. This guy was crying that he's never won an MVP until the NBA gave him an MVP. This guy, if you look at his statistics, they're fantastic. This guy is one of the greatest big men, athletically gifted big men we've ever seen. But the guy can't get in and get over the hump. He's the only big man in NBA history that's won an MVP. And I've said this many, many times. That's never taken his team to a, an Eastern or a Western Conference Finals. Just think about that. It's horrible. And when you have your second best player coming out and throwing you under the bus, that speaks volume about who you are. And honestly, him and Ben Simmons never got along. I've heard stories that Doc Rivers couldn't get, get these guys to actually get on a practice court, practice court to play with one another. It's a huge, huge problem. And this is an organization that's had a tremendous amount of first round and number one and number three draft picks. I mean, at one point, they had Nerlens Noel. I mean, uh, it was it Okafor? Okafor was there. Okafor, yep. He was there. You have, obviously, Embiid. I mean, you could go up and down. Ben Simmons was a, a number one pick. I mean, you've had all this talent over there, and you can never get over the hump. You can never take this team to a finals. Just think about that. And then you have this guy who walks around like his crap doesn't stink. He opens his mouth, yaps around. Everybody in the league hates him. I think him and Draymond Green are probably the two most hated players in the NBA. And they're both in different conferences. One's in the West and the other one's in the East. You ask anybody, who is the most hated player in the Eastern Conference? I guarantee you Joel Embiid's name would be popping up. Oh, nine out of ten. Okay? And we all know everybody hates Joel Embiid. I mean, I'm um, um, Draymond Green and also Brooks. He's not a very likable person either. But right now, if you're you're looking at the big picture here, if I were the 76ers, if you can get rid of this contract, if you can somehow move it and get a tremendous amount of players back for him, I would do it. This guy's a cancer. He's come out and said he's not playing back to back. This guy's got knee problems. This guy, and you saw what he did with the Knicks in in in, in the playoffs last year. Look what he did. Look how many fights he started. Steven Chenzo, look at the fights. Mitchell Robinson is out till February because of a bead. It's 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 not it's not something that you haven't seen or not understand. He is an unlikable player. And I'm gonna tell you this right now. The 76ers are an organization that makes a tremendous amount of mistakes. And if they hold on to this guy for any longer 
than they should. This is going to set this team back for at least another five to six years. I think we touched on him, what was it, a couple weeks ago and how mm -hmm. he was calling Philly out for everything that he's done for them. Mm -hmm. Ooh, what Really, what have you, I mean, what have you done? Are you talking community-wise? Are you talking about on the court? Are we talking about as a whole? I, I just think it's – he's so much of a me guy that it's it's disgusting. And when you you know you come out and say, I'm not playing back-to-back -back games, then you have your director of baseball ops guy coming out saying the same thing. I'm like, that could stay in-house. Why does that even need to be said? You're, it, it's going to play itself out anyways. And we've just seen the type of – person that he's become and whatever i think it would be hard to move that contract but if you could have somebody pull the trigger on something i'd get him the hell out of there java just look at this if you look at his numbers right now in the games that he's played this year in the regular season he's played 30 minutes he's averaging 14.7 points a game and 6.3 rebounds and four point i uh, have four assists a game and about one block a game just think about that. This guy is making $50 million. He's not playing back-to-back -back games, and he's a shell of what he has done over the last couple of years. I mean, he's an he's an average 30 points a game, and he's only averaging under – he's under 15 right now in the uh, uh, with the 76ers. It's, it's a bad look right now. And the fact that he's not playing back-to-back -back games, he's not going to get any rhythm. Basketball is all about rhythm. You know this. Everybody knows this. How are you going to get rhythm or gain rhythm if you're not playing back-to-back -back games? And you're not traveling with the team. He's already come out and said that even some of the back-to-back -back games, he's not going to travel with the team. He's going to stay home and take, you know, physical therapy for his knee. So it just shows him he's it shows that he's not a team player and it's a big, big problem. And again, we can go back and we can try to point fingers at what the organization tried to do. Nurse is a good coach. But Nurse has no control over him. As a matter of fact, in beating him, have knocked heads. He's knocked heads with Doc Rivers. Why do you think Doc Rivers is not there anymore? Because him and B, him and B couldn't get along. Him and Ben Simmons couldn't get along. And now he's over there screwing up Milwaukee. So we've seen this before. And again, the Philadelphia, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the Philadelphia, I was about to say Flyers, the Philadelphia 76ers are an organization that screws everything up. They have players that they can build around over the years. How many championships have the 76ers won in the last 50 years? One with Dr. J. <laughs> One. Just think about that. Even the Knicks, the New York Knicks that haven't won a championship since the 70s won two championships. Just think about that. It's bad. It's bad when you you have a big city like this. The 76ers are so beloved over there. They they pack out the arena, except when they play the Knicks. But <laughs> nevertheless, I, I, I think the situation right now is, is how could we move this contract? Where could we move it? Who would be interested in taking Joel Embiid? It used to be the Knicks, but after what happened with Mitchell Robinson, there's no way they're taking that contract. So where do you send him? Maybe OKC, we've brought up Giannis. Maybe that's a place that you could send. You're not going to get a lot of first-round draft picks for Joel Embiid, especially he doesn't want to play back-to-back -back games. How about Houston, a, a team that has a bunch of young players, have some draft stock, maybe the Nets. I mean... That would be funny. <laughs> I'm just saying, maybe the Nets will be willing to, to take on a contract like that and move Ben Simmons if they could find a way to move him. That would be funny. Let Embiid and Simmons rot with the Nets. <laughs> I'm just saying, they're... This is an organization that needs to figure out how they can move this contract away. If they don't, they're going to set their team back. I think Nurse is a great coach, but he's not going to win with Joel Embiid. Nobody can win with Joel Embiid. 